We are at a restaurant and because I'm a hungry man, I would make the pizza and lasagna. Do you think mm. you'll be able to eat it all? Yes, I will. We'll see what comes on the plate. Two menus for one mouth. Okay, here are my two menus. Pizza and lasagna. And Dahlia has his own, her own pizza. Mm. Okay. <laughs> I know, I know, we've only posted one or two videos in a long time and I have something important to tell you about that. So, well, first I'll say it one last time in case you still didn't know, we moved to France and we now have a baby. So it has been awesome, but of course it doesn't really help when it comes to finding time to record videos. Actually, all of the free time I have is spent on the Galactic course, which I do my best to keep on enhancing as much as I can pretty much nonstop. Right now we've reached almost 2,000 students, so I'm very proud and I'm going to keep going and try to always, always, always improve on it. So today I am very happy because I'm finally going to be imaging with a big rig uh, since we have moved to France. If you remember, uh, I reviewed and freaking loved this 6-inch Newt from Aperture last year. It was a loan, so I ended up sending it back, but High Point decided to ship it to me again here in France, and I couldn't be more thrilled. Oh, and yes, that important thing I have to say, uh, by the way, is that because I am now so used to doing serious videos for the course, I decided to be a bit less strict on myself on YouTube because that is stopping me from making more videos. So from now on, I'm going to let myself have more freedom uh, with the content and also include some random clips from our new life here in France once in a while because maybe it's interesting for some of you guys to kind of see how life here is compared to the US or other places in the world. Because if I care too much, I will never post videos on YouTube and I need to be a bit more loose. So for example, in this video, you'll see a couple of minutes uh, just from life here. Anyway, so let's get started with this scope. Okay, finally I have a telescope here and this is a carbon star from Apertura, which I've tried uh, in the US and this is a scope I really wanted as my, um, as my scope here in France. So I'm really, really happy. Uh, High Point was able to send it uh, internationally. So very, very cool. And now I'm just putting it together and uh, I can't wait to use this again because I really love this fast Newtonian. Also, if you want to, you can get this bag, which you can buy, and it's honestly very, very useful. The telescope fits exactly in there, and uh, it's nice to be able to carry this around instead of using a box. I mean, look at this beauty. For a first-time telescope, I think this is the perfect size. Uh, of course, you can remove this dew shield here, which I can show you right now. Just like that. And by the way, the dew shield itself is also so pretty, it matches the scope completely. Uh, so we have carbon fiber here and the red uh, rings around it, which is a very cool combo. Uh, so I'm gonna put this back now, which is very simple to add and remove, like that. And we have the focuser here, of course, so which is very nice as well. And two dovetails, so one small one, which I put on top in case I want to add some accessories right here. And I used the bigger dovetail, so the Los Mendes style dovetail at the bottom here for the base, since of course out of the two here, uh, the bigger one is more stable. So the aperture is 150, uh, so six inch, which for Newtonian is great. My first one was 8 inch, and I think 6 inch is also very good considering it's much smaller than 8 inch. The focal ratio is f4, and of course it is a Newtonian design. The tube length, without counting the dew shield here, is 48 centimeters, so 48.74, which is like 19 something uh, inches. And the weight of the tube is 4.7 kilos, so it's about uh, 10.4 pounds. The focal length is 600, so um, for most targets, it's ideal, honestly. Uh, 600 is perfect for both medium to large nebulae, including smaller galaxies like M51, which is kind of medium to small size, or M63, M64. You know, most popular targets will fit just nice in that 600 millimeter focal length field of view. So let's take it out to image M101. Uh, I already imaged a galaxy last time. I had it, so in the US, it was M51 and it looked amazing. So it's spring season, so galaxy season, so I don't have many, many colorful nebulae to shoot right now. So we'll stick to a galaxy. So M101 is a good one to go to. 
um, after M51. So let's see how it handles M101 in just one night. And this is light enough so I can just grab the AM5 and the scope and everything on top with my hands. So I'm going to put the scope down and I'm very glad that it's so light, even all together. So I think north is this way. I should have no idea. I guess we'll find out once it's dark. Actually, I was completely off. North is this way. This is north. This way. So, okay. Like that. And let's see. Yep, pretty good. That should be good. This was my first time in months doing any imaging with a regular telescope and because we now live in the countryside, I now have to try my best to not freak out at spiders and other bugs crawling around all the time. I polar lined and slew to M101, I then took a test shot which looked good and then launched the sequence doing 2 minute exposures all night. There will be two epic fails, my Meridian flip will ruin 80% of the files and I was too lazy to take calibration frames, so I will struggle uh, to process later. But anyway, that is tomorrow's problem. This is a boulangerie we come to often and it was rated number one, I think, in France. Recently on TV, in this region, so in the north of France. So it's very, very good. Let me show you. A nice pain chocolat. What is this one? Same thing, but with almonds. Mm, magnificent. And right now there's an event going on, but this is a view of the main place. This weekend is a foire and in our city and this is what it looks like, so a bunch of games. And um, my favorite is this one here, that's the best. The bumping cars. It's actually very pretty with the uh, mystery and uh, church there. Very cool. Okay, so that was a very uh, weird, abrupt transition, but anyway, uh, let's get back to the video and go check what the telescope captured. So epic fail, it seems like the first two hours look just fine, but then everything after that, so the entire night, it seems like there are some star trails. So it seems to have happened right after the Meridian flip and I was asleep around like 2 a.m. I think, so I couldn't check on it. But since it's the first time I'm imaging uh, with this rig here, uh, maybe the settings were wrong or a cable got stuck or something. But anyway, I can actually only keep the first two hours, which actually is I think 1.9 hours in total, and then trash everything else. So it really, really sucks, but this is life. So we'll see what we can get out of just two hours on this target. So I was not really hopeful about this, so I went through the processing pretty fast and did a you know, basic workflow. Uh, I actually was thinking of reshooting it for a full night uh, for this video, but I was like, you know what, if we only have two hours, it's maybe even better. Like, let's just show how, uh, what we can get out of a challenging data set. So this is uh, me trying to process the image uh, really quickly, and the result is actually not too bad. Um, my house is in a Bolor 6 zone, honestly for just 2 hours, not too shabby, so I actually like it very much. 
You can see some great details, the colors are natural and uh, honestly everything looks great and especially, especially those beautiful diffraction spikes which oh, I love it so much. I love diffraction spikes. So I'm going to keep this carbon star as my main scope for a very, very long time now. Well, I think this was pretty good for just two hours. Uh, I wish I had a full night, but obviously um, these this two mistakes, well, the, the maiden flip mistake uh, kind of ruined it. But honestly, for just two hours, it's really good. Um, I also made the huge mistake of not taking flats. Uh, I actually struggled a lot on Pix Inside to get those uh, gradients out. You can see here what the original image I was about to share was uh, looking like. But um, I spent more time and just spammed gradient correction on PixInsight uh, again and again. And uh, those gradients kind of went away uh, slowly. But still, take your flats, very important. Um, I will have to uh, do it next time. To me, the Carbon Star is the best reflector telescope, not just for beginners, but also for people uh, like me who've been doing Astro for 10 plus years and want something that they know is good without spending too much money. The stats are very nice, you know, f4 or f3.8 with a reducer is, in my book, very fast. Uh, the focal length is perfect for most targets at 600mm, uh, so that almost all of the popular targets fit nicely in the frame uh, without being too small or too big that they're cut off. The scope is made of carbon fiber, which is lighter than other material and helps with focus shift. Great. The focuser, you know, dual speed, Crayford, Amazing. Uh, what comes in the box is also super generous and so whatever mount you have, uh, you can use a scope right away because there are two dovetails, uh, one Los Mendes style and one Vixen type. So very generous and I love that. Uh, the straight light protection cover, great to have. Uh, the way the collimation knobs are built and placed, also great. The warranty that Apertura offers, great. The available accessories like the Dew Shield, for example, or the Apertura bag, that's also amazing uh, to have. And of course, lastly, the price, which is just fantastic for what it is. So if you're looking for a telescope to begin Astro with, and you've decided to go with a reflector like I did when I got started, I cannot think of a better scope at this time, uh, especially for the price. So I'll see you guys next time and class guys. Mm -hmm.